Have a day everyone and welcome to another episode of Better Catholics and today we are going to talk about a very important arm of the church which is the Catholic charity known here in the CNMI as the Caridad. But before we go to that, I would like to introduce myself once again. I'm Father Melvin. I'm Bishop Ryan. I'm Donna Flores. And I'm Lori Ogumoro. Lori Ogumoro, we have the pleasure of having with us the executive director of the Caridad here in the Diocese of Chalancanoa. Uh, thank you for, for saying yes to our invitation. <laughs> sure. 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 She yes. cannot say no. <laughs> <laughs> no, she willingly said yes. Let's yes, put it that yes. way. And thank the, you, Laurie. And I'm sure we w people would love to know more about the Caridad, what the Caridad is doing you know, for the people here uh, in the diocese. Um, what is the... The apostolate maybe of the caridad uh, but before that i would like to uh, um ask you how long have you been in the ministry well um i've been with caridad this is my 20th year at caridad wow. um and i've been the executive director for seven years so before i was the executive director um i was the manager at the women's shelter um, for about 13 years. Um, before that, in in the 1990s, I was a board member of Caridad. So I've been affiliated with um, Catholic Social Services and Caridad for many, many years um, because I'm a social worker. And as a social worker, I've done a lot of work in the community and have always had sort of a passion for um, community mm -hmm. needs. And so... Um, I guess I was sort of pulled yes. um, to, to be a board member. And then um, it was, it's, it's a funny story how I came on to Caridad and we can talk about that later, but um, <laughs> uh, that's sort of how um, I became working full time um, with Caridad in um, 2002. 2002. So it's been, yeah, it's been quite a while, 20 years. That's a long time mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, serving the people. You know, uh, yeah. when, when we say serving the people, uh, what do we do really in the, uh, in the uh, office or in, in Caridad? What does Caridad do in the, for the community? Well, we, we have various programs. So, um, you know, I, I guess we could really go back and talk about the history of mm, Caridad. Okay. Maybe, maybe that would sort of oh, okay. lay the foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, Caridot was founded um, in May 1980 by Monsignor Macho, the former bishop. And he was the, actually the first executive director. And he was the executive director for seven years. And he, um, along with nine um, like-minded community individuals, established Caridot. At that time, it was called Northern Marianas um, Catholic Social Services. Mm -hmm. And they wanted, their first program was the Family Services Program. And that program was to develop strong families. And they also had a clothing program, um, you know, emergency food and shelter, the um, counseling programs. They did things to help community members. And so from that, you know, we've grown over the years. But it wasn't like a, an institutionalized um, like organization before, or it was like an informal mm. group of people uh, coming together? Or, no, yeah. it, it wasn't. It was in two, in, institutionalized. Absolutely. It was incorporated, ah, okay. founded. Mm -hmm. ah. And um, over the years, it has be, it's grown and it's developed. Um, it's become a... Formal 5013C. It's a nonprofit oh, organization. Nice. All of our programs are um, funded by um, grants. Mm -hmm. So we're a hundred percent funded by grants. So um, my my job, along with a couple other people, is to write, write all the grants <laughs> to bring in all the money to fund all the programs, yes. um, the services and personnel. So it's a it's a lot of work. Um, but it's, you know, it's a labor of love if you yes. have that passion of knowing where to, to um, what you want to do to help the community. 
you mentioned about uh, the late uh, at that time when Senior Tomas and looking back also historically, we were not a diocese yet. You know, we became a diocese uh, November eight. Yes, uh, eighteen years ago. What year was that? Nineteen eighty four. I'm I'm not good in math. So. Uh, the late uh, uh, Bishop Tomas, when he was assigned here, he was, as a priest, he was assigned in Guam. And I believe uh, when he was assigned here, there were already perhaps plans that eventually CNMI will become a diocese. And so um, that was uh, an important move also when, when you know, uh, as a church, you know, the social arm, it's uh, when, when we had our prior recordings also about you know, how we live out the gospel message of helping the poor, the vulnerable, you know, uh, making it the social arm of the church. And this is one. And in many other places, they call it Caritas, or Catholic mm-hmm. Charities. And uh, Caridad, correct me, Donna, is a Chamorro word, Caridad, which means charity. So 1980, um, uh, Monsignor Camacho was here. And so 1984, when we became a diocese and he was appointed the first diocese, uh, bishop of the Deshaun and Kanoa, then that's when he became bishop. So uh, uh, looking back, I, I believe it was just like, you know, really you know, God's plan, part of this movement, the structure, you know, that uh, um, Caridad came into being. And so with, with the history, I wonder who were the first board members? I, I, I didn't, uh, you, you have a, <laughs> it would be interesting to see if some of those original board members are still here. Well, um, I luckily I brought um, Mr. Carlos Shoda, Jesse C. Borja, Jesus Villa Gomez, Larry Cabrera, um, Gus Sellis, Angie Villa Gomez, Luis Limas, Agnes McFeeders, and um, Juan Arsalan. So those were the original nine, including um, the bishop. So the one woman out of the many men in there. Correct. Agnes um, no, McFeeders to Agnes yeah. McFeeders yeah. and um, Maria Angelis. Mm. So there was two. Um, Maria. Oh, see, Angie. Uh, Angie. Angie. That's yes. Angie. Yes. yes so yeah. they they were the original founders of Caridot, and you know I think the bishop pulled together a really strong group of people that yes. had that vision of where they wanted to set the foundation for the community, mm. and they brought it together and they kept it going. Um, the original president was Carlos Shoda, and um, you know from there they 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 took it forward. And now you know we're in our forty second year. Right. You know. Right. You know. And you know a lot of things have grown since then. You know we we started out with nothing, and now we're we have um, our programs and services are over one point seven million dollars. Mm. You know wow. from nothing to where we are now. So we're we're continuing to build, and we we still have more things that we want to do um, because we see the new need in the community and mm-hmm. we go there. Um, um, people may not realize, but um, in Imposse, it started in Carrot Odd. Mm. We had teen, teen Bound, we had Marianas, the Teen Center, you know, different things started in Carrot Odd and they moved forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's because of the people and, and the desire to, they see a need and they mm-hmm. develop the things from there. It's, it, it's just like the women's shelter. Mm-hmm. Somebody came to the board at the time and said, you know, there's a need for a women's shelter. And I was on the board at the time and there was this great discuss, discussion about, are we going to do this? It's going to take a lot of money. And the board said, yes, it's something the community needs. Mm-hmm. And so that was like in 1998 took a lot of work but we opened it in 2001 mm-hmm. and so we're still do you know where the shelter is father melvin no, no. good no, no. good no, no, no. <laughs> you were scared <laughs> i know i was already up in our day you're not supposed to laurie was this. scared <laughs> like, no, no. that was a trick question <laughs> i'm glad you don't <laughs> you know the, the shelter's been open for many years and we've helped yes. many women mm-hmm. and children and we still try to keep it a confidential location so it's right, it's a safety right. issue um but of course, we have to protect the people, you know, that we are right. caring for. And uh, yeah, so privacy is really very, very important. I recall yeah. when our noon show, uh, Archbishop Martin Krebs visited, I forgot what year. Yeah. And I, I had in mm-hmm. mind, like, I, I think he should see the shelter. And it's, 
uh, a very important ministry of uh, the community and the church. And I really thank you, Laurie, because, you know, uh, you and the staff, the many dedicated volunteers for the shelter and carried it overall, it really is, uh, you know, uh, a way for us also to to get the credit. Like, you know, you are part of the Dice of Chalan Kanoa. You're doing the day-to-day work. And so um, he was really very pleased you know, with, with, with that uh, ministry. It's an important ministry. And that's why I asked ask that question because, you know, no one is supposed mm-hmm. to know. But Donna, I think you know. Well, I do. <laughs> not that you went there. I know you have a good uh, married life. <laughs> Well, it's not only for that reason, yeah. right? But yeah. I did have the opportunity to to volunteer there. Mm-hmm. Um, it was part of my undergraduate degree. Uh, it was my capstone. So I was there um, sometimes at midnight. My shift is midnight mm-hmm. to 7 a.m. So it's holidays. It's weekends. That's okay mm-hmm. because when you actually uh, are exposed to, mm-hmm. to just the the various uh, situations um, that yeah. women and children go there for, for help. Uh, it really humbles you mm-hmm. um, True. and it makes you want to help. Uh, you know, um, we had the chores to clean the restroom, do all those things, <laughs> refill the pantry, you know, all those things that you do at home. So fortunate for us who are domestic goddesses, you know, a- among other um, r- responsibilities in life. Um, we know, and you know, it, it's the opportunity for those individuals to rest and seek uh, solace somewhere. You know, they've had a rough couple of days. Who knows? And um, we're there to provide them the the comfort and the peace uh, right. where it's at. So it's a really humbling experience. Um, I don't know if I would have the the stomach you know just the to do it on a long-term basis because you see some situations that you just can't believe happens but it does happen so it's a really uh, humbling experience and then you know when you you just want to fall on your knees and pray for these Mm -hmm. people you know so uh, it was a wonderful experience and I would do it all over again and I thank Miss Laurie for always opening the doors for you know, folks like us who need that that uh, exposure, who need that um, opportunity to go out there and see what other what what does the CNMI offer as far as social work and social services. So it's a it's and a I really experience. hope that uh, I know Laurie mentioned at the beginning that you know we're one hundred percent. You know, uh, we operate through grants, yeah. and it really is a task of the community, right? And mm-hmm. so uh, I hope that you know, our leadership in the government would also see that because of what Caridad is doing and just like any other social services, it really is service to the community it and then it benefits everyone. You know? And so um, perhaps like education, but you know, this yeah. is a different topic. And I, I, I just really am grateful too. Like there are many people like, you know, when you volunteer, it, it's a transformative, it's a life-changing experience. I recall I I I was in Bishop. I I went there and I I know that I recall Laurie like your office was also like where you slept. I actually mm-hmm. saw her bed. Now okay, you know I won't say where and all of that, but that's how the many people who work there like you and volunteer. Uh, your 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 sense of time is like you know whenever you're called you're needed. So it's dedication and commitment also of the community. So what a beautiful reality to or dynamics of this you know the volunteers and the people who were there and doing everything they can to make them feel safe home and not only there but you know even like helping you know those women like you know uh, uh, whatever their needs uh whether it's legal it's yeah. it's uh well you know. we we have partners then we work with legal partners we have law enforcement partners but you know, a lot of times we get a lot of um negative feedback. Well, what about us men? But we do help men as well. Um, we have had men in the shelter. Um, we help people who are gay and lesbian. They are in the shelter. Um, you know, if they don't feel comfortable, we may have to find them apartments. So, you know, whatever the situation, we'll help them sort it out and we'll find a safe place for them. But the shelter is not their only thing we do. Right. You know, yeah. we have food and rental programs. You know, we have a sexual assault services. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, 
What or, about medical? You have uh, a counselor on have, site. We have an awesome mm-hmm. counselor, mm-hmm. not just on site, but also in our um, through the main office. Because um, not all of our um, victims may go to the shelter. They may mm-hmm. we may provide services um, through the main office. Um, victim advocacy. We have the victim hotline. The victim hotline is proving to be very important. Um, so there's lots of different things that CARADOT does, but, you know, through this disasters and, you know, I really want to give a shout out to Catholic Charities USA because, you know, the bishop knows very well, like after typh- Super Typhoon Sotolor, they heard about our typhoon and um, our Super Typhoon and immediately they'll send us a, a grant. And the bishop signs off on it and they send us a check. And then they'll say, do you need more money? And then they'll give us a big grant and would provide, push out that money for rent and food assistance. They did the same thing after Super Typhoon U2. We had an earthquake here and they called me up. Are you guys okay? Yeah, we're okay. The, you know, the earthquake was far away, you know, because they'll, you know, they'll see something in the news, right? They don't really realize what it is. So Catholic Charities is also, they're always sending us a donation. They'll think of us. And that's how we got money for a generator at the women's shelter. So now if we do have another typhoon, <laughs> we don't need one, um, right? <laughs> you know, we were, we're good with a, a generator and a house and it's all done. So um, we're, we're good. So, so Catholic Charities USA has also been very supportive to us. Um, so we have different things like that. So the money for, um, we, we also have a human trafficking program. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, that continues to keep going can't really talk too much about it, mm-hmm. but there right. is, there are trafficking issues on the island. It continues. Um, as long as we have foreign workers on the island, people will exploit them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not everybody is um, trafficked. And we, um, we cannot say you're trafficked and you can't come to us and say, I'm a trafficking victim. We have to work with lawyers and the lawyers will talk to you and determine if your case is a trafficked if you're trafficked or not. And once we get the okay from a lawyer, then you're admitted to our program. Mm. That's how it works. You can't just come and say, I'm a victim of human trafficking and I want to be in your program. It doesn't work like Mm -hmm. that. Um, And if someone comes to our window and says, I'm a victim of human trafficking, that's a red flag for us. Right. Um, But there, but you know, we, I, I've been doing this work since 2005. So I pretty much have an idea if you've been a victim. Um, be- just because I've been doing it for yeah. a while. So yeah. you kind of know, and if, if something comes to us and you, you work with, um, the lawyers and you work with law enforcement and, um, you'll figure it out. And if you think things go well, then you'll get the immigration relief that this individual deserves if things don't go well. But the, the most important thing is things People think, oh, they're just going to get it, and it happens like that. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. These cases take, could take. It takes time. Two years or more. Right. right. I recall Lori when Sister Stella Mangwana. Mm-hmm. I think it's good to mention her name. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> she sure. uh, yeah. was a big help to to our, our diocese and Caridad, and she was a, a counselor. But at that time, when you mentioned about immigration relief, I recall like, you know, someone who finally got the T visa. And the person is now able to travel legally, freely, and find a job. I mean, you know, how life-changing can that be? It, it's, for someone waited for like what you mentioned about two years. Two so we years have stories like that. that you there's, know, a, yeah. there's a lot of stories like that in people's life. I mean, when you come here and you're exploited and you're um, abused or whatever your story is and... It's, it's a cause for celebration. And so when somebody gets their visa and they get their employment authorization, it's really a cause for celebration. And then they can decide what they want to do with their life mm-hmm. and they can go forward. And many of them may relocate to the continental United States or Guam mm-hmm. or, or somewhere else. Um, and what's really beautiful is they'll be in... California or Utah or New York or Georgia and they'll call they'll call me up and say you know what this happened in my life and you were the first person I thought of so I'm going to mm. call you and tell you mm. you know and it just you know you just want to cry because they remember you but they remember you because of you were there when they needed you most 
And so, and you, you get to know these, these people right. really well, uh, whether they're uh, Chinese uh, and you can't speak to them at yeah. all, or they're a young Filipino woman who um, came to the, to the CNMI and was not her real name or a face, yes. fake uh, passport or whatever. But we're, we're with it through them, uh, through yeah. the thick and thin. And so you become really, uh, you, you know them really well by the time they're ready to leave. So. You really have you really have to be very very passionate and oh yeah, yeah to, to do this kind of ministry because listening to the to you and to the other sharings also um, I get a sensing that all you get in the office are you know most of the time negative uh, negative energy so to speak you have people complaining about this you have people coming to you I don't have this I need this I don't have a house I am you know a victim of this and that and the, the these people are all crying for help you know, um, how do you uh, manage to <laughs> to survive your day and uh, she lost still. weight I, that's what i told her i haven't seen her in a while <laughs> yeah it's, it's uh, you really have to be very passionate well, and madly in love with what you are doing well there's a there's a transformative power mm. of seeing someone you know really grow into uh, um you know recently if 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 you I don't know. It's it's like um, we're with somebody through this terrible domestic violence. Um, they they get a divorce. Um, they become a, a U.S. citizen, um, and they take back their name, but they don't have money for their their um, passport, a U.S. passport. But CareDot can help them buy their passport, get a U.S. passport. We've given them back their name. So it's, it's full yeah. circle. And so it closes that. So right. yes, you're through that negative part, but it's, I don't know. It's just this, is this trans transformative That's power of this human being. And isn't that what is the right. whole body right. and spirit? And there's nothing greater as a better Catholic yes, yes. to me. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, I was raised by these two very, very Catholic grandmothers. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, all my life growing up, you know, and, um, you know, I was taught by my father, whenever you hear a siren, you pray for the person who needs help. Mm -hmm. You know, even if we're sitting in the car waiting for my mother who went inside yes. the grocery store and you hear a siren, pray for it. And you hear the, pray for the person who needs help. <laughs> you know, we're five years <laughs> old, <laughs> you know, this is what we're doing. This is, so I don't know. I grew up like that with, these kind of grandmothers, you know, um, so, yeah. and my grandmother was devoted to St. Martin de Porres and he is the patron saint of social workers. And the feast day of St. Martin de Porres is November 3rd. Do you know that father Melvin? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my grandmother yeah. died on November 3rd. Oh, wow. Uh, so uh, November 3rd here is also, November 2nd in the United States. So mm. that's the day I observe All Souls Day mm. and my grandmother's, you know, death anniversary. And so it just all fitting because I have the picture of St. Martin's in my office that I saw growing up every day. Reminded. Because she did her three o'clock hours every day. Yeah. You know, my Irish grandmother. So, um, so it's really hard to explain that transformative it's, power that you're talking about. It's more like the reward that you get out of, uh, from, from of hopelessness, yes, you yes. know, you're helping the person out of hopelessness and empowering yeah, I mean, them. Yes. But really it's up to the person as well. She can uh, only do her right, programs right. can only do so much. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. I mean, you know, we we're giving you options. I can't mm -hmm. do it for you. And sometimes mm -hmm. people yeah. want you to do it for them. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you, know, you get repeat, and, and repeats. They'll, they'll, they'll blame you. Yeah. There, there'll be people that blame you, but, mm. you know, but later on they'll say, you know, I understand. And then you'll see people that's like, oh, gosh, mm. we only wish, you know, yeah. we only wish. But, you know, I mean, we can't do it all. And we have right. to also understand that. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of what we have to learn. 
and sometimes we learn the hard way yeah. and sometimes that's why <laughs> yes. you have white hair you know, because, yeah, you know or no hair you take, <laughs> yeah, right. and sometimes you take it to heart mm. like you feel like you failed the person but uh, over time over years i'm sure you've learned how to mm -hmm. disconnect and yeah. you know not, not carry carry the weight of you know their issues on your shoulders for so long there's only so much we can do right you know you have you have to want to be helped yeah, some right. of them come for a temporary or uh instant solution mm -hmm. and if they don't get it right all right they, they, yeah. get, they get mad at you i mean <laughs> be, before before i worked at caridot i worked at the hospital i was a medical social worker for 20 years and you see a lot of bad things in the emergency room you know mm -hmm. and um you you have to learn how to deal with it and then I just move from one place to another. And that's the luxury of social service, yeah, right? Yeah. We're all we're all in that social service. <laughs> yes, yes, right? yeah. The right yeah. That's the same thing. <laughs> same thing, yeah, but like, you yeah. Right? Yeah. You know? And I think the word that Father <laughs> Melvin used about ministry, social yeah, service, yeah. pastoral yeah. care, right, right. Yeah. you know, uh, uh, in the school system, mm -hmm. you know, with, with, with students with special needs. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, you mentioned right. about you can do everything and, and you know, you have to let the person also choose and you can only provide so much as you were saying that i was thinking also of the many volunteers that we have and some it could be like on on uh, you know on on on, on uh, um, uh, specific needs or, or or function or time or occasion but there are also like regular volunteer or even the staff you know when you say we can do everything I hope that Caridad also has like, you know, self-care kind of thing for, mm. for, for people like you, Laurie, or, or the staff or the volunteers, because right. as you said, we can only do so much. Mm. Mm. I think in any form or, or, or way of, of doing ministry, you know, self-care is, is key. Right. You can't give what you don't have. Exactly. Right. And, and, and we, out. yeah. And out. then, you know, uh, we're not the Salvador del Mundo. We do our part, <laughs> but I think it's important to have that, that, you know, aspect also in that way so that you can serve better and, and, and more. And, and uh, uh, I don't know, uh, do you have a beach day or, you know, because, you know, it, it's a heavy work. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, what, what kind of, do you have like, you know, a, a time where you can also, what's the word, decompress or do that? Yeah. You do that at PSS. We do a lot more now since the onset of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's not to say it wasn't there previously, but it was pushed more mm -hmm. um especially during the pandemic and just you know everybody's got something right so and then on top of what we do for work mm -hmm. it just further um i don't know ampli <laughs> it just increases the level of mm -hmm. stress on a person so i can imagine i was just complimenting her on how great she looks and what's her secret because i know <laughs> what she does and i know how long she's been at it so I mean, she you obviously have great self care. Uh, mm. Self care. I, I have a I have activities. A, a, a garden and two yes, dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Why I, I like my plants. <laughs> yeah. you know, and there's a lot of rain, so there's a lot of weeds. You know, yeah. and that's that's that'll the keep way. you busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so much rain. You know. Yeah. We'll complain if there's too much rain. We'll complain if there's <laughs> yeah. not enough rain. But like, I believe oh. you're also a t you're on call twenty four seven, right? For I mean, as a social worker, if there's a crisis yeah. or an emergency, you get pulled out. We only have so many social workers here on the island, and mm -hmm. I'm sure you're one of two. Maybe? Well, no, well there, I mean, are there more now? Well, we're what Caridot is is a little bit different oh, okay. than the hospital, but we're they'll they'll call you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I I. I I have I have two phones, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's just, the other one is turned off, and the other one is. <laughs> they're, both they're both Father turned Father Melvin, off right now. <laughs> we were just the clergy and staff. We had our gathering a few days ago, and you know, when, oh, there was a report uh, about about uh, how you know, with after the pandemic, and they invited like you know, someone in the area of of health, and you know, a doctor, a nurse, and a social worker. And so like everybody could just at this break time could go to whatever desk available. They were surprised that most of the people, the participants went to the social workers. Yes. No? And then were the, also the counselors and you know, people who just wanted to, to share about, about their, right. their, their people needs. People just need to vent. You know? Yes. And yeah. I wonder if there was yeah. a priest also and no one lined up. <laughs> in there. Yeah. 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 But you really have to have, a, uh, um, you know, 
the eyes, the ears, and of course the 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 beautiful beautiful lips that you have to mm-hmm. to uh, mm-hmm. you know exercise as part of your ministry. Yeah, um, you listen to a lot of people, and when people come to you, like uh, I was telling saying earlier, people come to you telling you about their problems, about their needs. Sometimes all these things uh, can burden us and um, make us feel heavy, heavy. Uh, mm-hmm. ourselves. Um, but we have to do this. It's you have the passion to do it, and that alone is is a sign that we have uh, we have a church that is alive, a church that is really um, uh, organic in in nature. It's not just uh, on the pulpit, not just mm-hmm. in the uh, Mount Carmel Cathedral. But we have a church that is going right there to the streets, mm-hmm. listening to the listening to the people, and isn't it a beautiful image of a of, of a church? Really, yeah. it's not just a structure, yeah. but you are dealing. We are dealing with the living stones, right? Mm-hmm. right. I wonder, Laurie, if you can share a bit about <clears throat> what would be the uh, pressing issues, and perhaps you know our priorities also were towards the end of the calendar. What do you see as the like, you know, are really uh, important needs or problems that we have as a community here in the CNMI? Well, thank you for asking that. So right now, um, you know, it's pretty obvious. I mean, every day there's there's always something about domestic violence in the paper. So that's obvious. But sort of underlying the root of that is there's a lot of substance abuse issues. And... Mm. um, um Right now at CareDot, we, what we are trying to do, and this is how all of the programs at CareDot got started, is we have this vision of a, um, an additional substance abuse treatment program in the community because we realize there's just not enough. Um, you know, we know there's something at CGC. We know there's a great program out at SAR, but there's, there's, the need is so great. Um, we have an excellent um, counselor on um, treatment a person that's qualified, uh, CareDot, um, uh, on staff already. We have a curriculum already. We're, you know, we're gearing up towards um, developing that program. Mm. And because we would like to just have another option for people to go to mm-hmm. where they feel comfortable. Because people need options mm-hmm. where they feel safe and they feel comfortable. They can come and talk to somebody mm-hmm. and they can get help. Because you know, underlying a lot of the issues in our community is substance abuse. You know? um, and that's obvious to everybody. So um, I think that's a driving thing. We, you know, we have, we, we you know, we, we see people every day asking for food and rental assistance. And so we have funding to do, you know, help with that. Um, those things will never change. Um, but right now, this is what we're gearing up to do. We've asked for some funding, some seed money um, from the um, Saipan Northern Island Legislature delegation um, to kind of, this is the same way that Gomez Esperanza got started. He gave us that seed money so we could um, get it build going it. and build it. And here we are 20 years later um, with Gomez Esperanza. Um, so we, we hope to get that started um, because we, we feel that we can offer just an extra um, hand to the community because um, we do have competent caring staff. You know, right now at CareDot, we have really great staff. Um, we have a good partnership with the drug court. So we're seeing firsthand, um, you know, people who need help. And we're offering a place where people can get employment um, and get, you know, some ways to get through the drug court program so um we're, we're doing our part but you know, there's other things we can do so that's one thing we're, we're we're thinking of right now yeah and with the outreach that they're doing of course they need more more personnel more staff so right, that needs right. more funding so mm-hmm. i think what we could do all, all could what we could all do is help them lobby the legislature right. for this yeah. funding because it's to benefit our community um so many social ills out there and i know it's taboo for a lot of us to talk about so those that do come out and seek help let's help them because then it also encourages 
others to do as well. But she, you know, she just said they have wonderful staff, but I believe it's the same staff you've had, right? I mean, yep. it would be good to have an increase of right, support. Right. Well, if we get the funding, right, then, mm-hmm. then we, right, and we have we have people in line, but yes. we need this funding That's so right. that we can right. build that right. staff. Yes. And so, yes. you know, we can slowly do that, but. Yes. Money is always the issue, but that's how, that's yeah. how these programs get started. Yeah. And, you know, um, when I came on board, we had only a few, a few programs and, you know, we've continued to grow from there, but right now I'm, I'm just feel really um, blessed with the staff we have. Yeah. And, you know, we, um, we got an help for Judy. She's, she's right. feeling much better with accounting because we keep overloading her with all these rent and food and, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. you know, we have so many landlords. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, yeah. to pay rent every month. So there's a lot, lo- lots happening. It's, it's a busy yeah. place. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people asking for help for food and rent and, oh. you know, it's Thanksgiving's coming up. So yeah. there'll be yeah. canned food donations. So people will be like, Oh, that's correct. That. Yeah. yeah. So Christmas, yeah. Yeah. Christmas is coming up. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe this is it's a, a busy beautiful, time for Carida. Yeah, yeah. And maybe yeah. this is a beautiful opportunity for you to appeal to our uh, viewers, our listeners, for you know, for donation, be it in kind, financial, mm-hmm. food, uh, clothing. Um, this uh, we will give you the microphone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the microphone. Well, we we are so appreciative of the um, the donations that mm. we've um, always received. CareDot um, has always been thankful to the community, um, the community support. Right now, we're, we're not taking um, clothing donations because we have to do some renovations. Mm. We have a mold issue in the training uh, center where we've been storing the, um, the clothing. So we're working on that. We've cleared out everything. We've had rummage sales and we've gotten everything out and so now we're bringing in cleaners mm. and we've told people who've come by with their donations say please bring it to you know somewhere else empty vessel or someplace else you know we tell them where to go you know share it with mm-hmm. the other people in the community and then we'll let you know as soon as we you care how are always our first place mm-hmm. to go i said well thank you so much <laughs> you know um as if we get it done sooner we'll we'll let the community know and you can come back but we, you know, you can caredot.com. There's a PayPal connection. Mm. You know, you can send us a check. We will be um, doing a uh, fundraising drive because we, <coughs> excuse me, we did not have our um, 42nd anniversary because of COVID and because of then it was the uh, mini games. So mm. we didn't want to compete with other things in the community. So now we're going to be sending that out probably around christmas or thanks thanksgiving or christmas so we always welcome donations of course um so monetary in kind canned food thanksgiving is coming up but we do have people so but our you know our our food canned food donation we try to prioritize people who are not eligible for food stamps or anything like that and there there are people in the community who do not get federal assistance like that so they're they're our first priority but like you said, sometimes there are people that get a little bit angry that <laughs> they don't get that. So, um, you know, the staff are pretty good about, um, you know, saying, well, and we can give you this. But you're you still not going to get that. Do. You still have to do what you have to do <laughs> and continue on the mission of bringing hope to the people. That is how we that is how we serve people, bring Christ to the community. And uh, so thank you very much, thank Lori, you. for you. gracing us thank you. with your presence and with your expertise, with your you know, passion in, in the ministry to serve people. Thank you. The church really is alive, like, uh, like I said. And the idea of the church being, being uh, very clericalistic has not the, the image of the church, not, not the only image of the church, but the church is reaching out. It has... A, it has arms and legs and lips and ears and eyes. And through the caridad, mm-hmm. we can see that. We can see that. And with that transformative power that you're talking about, you are transforming not only the lives of the volunteers, but also the lives of people. Mm-hmm. And because of that experience, we are making more and more people to become um, well, to become good, and to become better Catholics.